Cool. Very cool. I see you got a San Diego t-shirt on, so uh, are you trying to purposely confuse me? Um, no, 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 Jimi Hendrix in concert. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, that's cool. All right. Wait, I got a Jimi Hendrix pillow somewhere in this house. No. I'll, have to, uh, I'll have to bring it out. But anyway, yes, we have it out already in a, in a limited form uh, of just 200, which are really for the, um, to give people an idea of what to expect. But the full distribution goes into effect on the 15th. It's like that you're going to be pressing vinyls and all that? Yeah, all that good stuff, absolutely. It seems people want that now, it's like the vinyls, they, they, they prefer that to CDs. Yeah, you know, it's, it's odd, but I think uh, I was reading someplace that, you know, they're outselling CDs, uh, vinyl. So uh, it's cool because that's what I grew up with, you know, was you know, buying albums at the local record store, you know, and getting the new Zeppelin album or the new Black Sabbath album or whatever, you know. It's like that too. We got cassettes now. People are starting to go crazy on cassettes. Cassettes now. are big too. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, all of my early stuff, you know, was on cassette, you know. It's like that the people just keep the trend going. They want the cassette to match all the, the classic stuff. So I guess you just got to go with the, the times. You know, as long as they love music and as long as, uh, you know, there's a market for it, it doesn't really matter, you know, what delivery system it is, whether it's cassette or eight track or, or digital downloads, which seem to be really big today also. So Jack Star, where did the um, album name come from, you know, to, to get it? like souls of the innocent yeah um i think it's a great name and uh i wish i could tell you i came up with it but i did not uh the bass player in the band came up with it uh one day about i don't know i think two years ago he called me up or three probably like three years ago he called me up and said listen i'm i'm writing some lyrics i've got an idea for a song called souls of the innocent so i'm thinking well you know, what is it about, you know, and uh, he explained to me that it's a song about the shooting that took place in Las Vegas, where people were going to a concert, and then there was a, a sniper on the on one of the hotel uh, root windows overlooking the uh, concert goes and he was basically picking them off with a with a high powered rifle. And so, you know, I think about it. And uh, I think it, it impacted Ned, the bass player, a lot because of the futility of it. You know, these are people uh, going to have a good time, going to hear music, which is a very innocent, benign thing to do. You know, they weren't there to fight a war. They weren't there to demonstrate. They were just there to hear music. And uh, they truly were, you know, souls of the innocent. And uh, so we kind of wanted to pay tribute to them in that song. Okay. It's like that that was a sad, sad event that made yes. this, the world news basically. Yes. And, yes. Uh, we don't want stuff like that happening ever again. I mean it's Yeah, I totally agree with you. And uh hopefully uh there'll be less and less of it, you know, in the future. But speaking on you know, your 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 stuff and what you're doing now is like have you been keeping busy, let's say in the, the COVID periods like um like yes. working on this album and probably just always working i, I would presume yeah uh, really we have uh we didn't want to let you know the covid pandemic uh prevent us from doing what we love which is making music and we took that time where a lot of people you know were locked down we took that time and we used it uh constructively and we recorded uh, the album, Souls of the Innocent. Um, and, you know, there was an element of, um, you know, people saying, us, oh, you, you're really going to go into a recording studio and you're really going to get together. You know, you guys will be like breathing and sweating on each other. You know, they were painting a very uh, dark, negative picture. And uh, nevertheless, we did what we thought we wanted to do. And uh, we, we felt that... We felt it was important for us to get our music out and not necessarily 
uh, totally give in to uh, what was going on, you know. And I'm not saying that it would have been wrong to totally stay in and and uh, hunker down and but for us as musicians you know we felt the need to uh, to be creative and to express ourselves and I think that there was a lot of people that really depend on musicians and artists to give them uh, a ray of light you know and especially when the world was so dark in 2020 so it really became kind of like a sacred duty for us to to keep going and do what we do. And with the history of Jack Star's Burning Star, how have you um, been keeping up, you know, um, freshness, you know, and and keeping the ideas, you know, unique and new and fresh, basically. Yeah, and that's always a concern, you know, uh, when you uh, when you put out an album because everybody wants to be relevant, you know. I, I want to stay relevant and the guys in my band want to stay relevant and we want to stay fresh. So what we do basically is we listen, you know, to what's going on around us and we try to incorporate that, but without selling our souls, you know, without becoming something that we're not. But we want to incorporate uh, the, the world of, of 2022 in our music and uh, and uh, at the same time paying tribute to our our metal roots so it's uh it's kind of a tightrope you know you've got to walk this thin balance you know you find metal is as strong as it was let's say 10 years ago or is it you know starting to get stronger now i think it actually is starting to get stronger uh i'm i'm kind of impressed by uh, like this whole younger you know generation you know especially like when we go to europe and we play and we we look out and we see you know people that weren't even born when Burning Star put out its first album in uh, 1984. It's truly it's truly amazing, you know. And uh, I'll give you a quick case in point. Um, we played in Germany about eight about eight years ago, maybe nine years ago, and so we were doing this festival, and there was a you know a line of of fans, you know that waited till after we finished to get our autographs and buy merchandise and all that. So we were at the merch table signing autographs and um, this young guy came up who looked like he was really like 16, 17. It turned out he was 22, but he looked really young and uh, he was really a fan of the band and he was a fan of my previous uh, recordings, uh, especially the one that I did with Rhett Forrester, who was the singer from Riot way back when. And anyway, it turned out that he became our singer. And uh, when we announced to the world, you know, about two years ago that we had a new singer uh, named Alex Panza from Turin, Italy, some of the pictures started surfacing on the internet of him getting an autograph from me at this uh, festival. So everything goes around, comes around, and uh, like I was saying, I'm just really happy that there are, you know, young people uh, getting into the whole metal thing, you know. And that's an incredible story. I mean, certainly incredible for him as well. Yes, yes. And, and, for, and for me as well, because uh, it just shows, you know, the impact that we made, uh, in, you know, in the world of metal and, uh, and also that we were able to transcend just our generation. In, and we were able to hit a much younger generation. You know, like I was joking around with the bass player, Ned Maloney, and uh, I was saying, you know, uh, you and I, Ned, and, and Rhino, we could all be, we're all old enough to be this guy's father, you know, and it's, so it's cool, you know? Yeah. But it's like, that is that is life in music, I guess, now. Like, right, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think of playing, you know, in the summertime versus wintertime, do you find there's a different vibe, you know, certainly for the festivals out there and stuff like that? People just get more excited? Yeah, I do. I think, you know, the, uh, summer kind of reawakens a lot of people. It's kind of like, uh, you know, it, if truly humans are in sync with nature, which I think we are, you know, in nature, 
you know, things come back in bloom and things, you know, th you know, things kind of like reawaken from like uh, the sleep of winter. And, uh, and I think people do as well. And they want to go out and they want to, you know, mingle and socialize and, and do stuff. And uh, it's just fantastic that we are returning to norm more and more. And uh, this horrible nightmare of COVID seems to have lessened its grip. And Jack, let's say for experiencing with guitars and stuff for this new album. Yes. Have, have you uh, played around with different types of guitars or, you know, just the straight guitars you usually play? Well, you know, I'm pretty conservative, which kind of shocks people, you know, because, you know, they always think, you know, long haired musicians playing metal have to be a wild and crazy bunch of people. But I really am conservative and I stick to what I've been doing for the like the last like 40, 50 years. You know, I mean, I started playing when I was 10 years old uh, and I'm playing basically the same kind of guitars that I've always played, which are it's either going to be a Fender Stratocaster or it's going to be a Gibson Les Paul. And I'm still playing those and, uh, uh, you know, I guess go for what works. And uh, for me, that's always worked. And uh, they're the, the guitars people want anyways. I mean, it's right. what, what looks great on somebody. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And Jack, you guys got good representation with your, your new promo video and uh, another one coming out July 1st, I've seen. Yeah, you know, I, I'm really uh, very happy with the direction that our management has taken. You know, we have new management, Giles Lavery, and a new record company, Global Rock. And um, they really put together a plan, you know, to get this album out. Uh, the plan involves, of course, um, having a lot of uh, promotion, you know, on the, uh, on the internet and having uh, interviews such as this one and having a publicist. Uh, we have John Lappin, who's doing a fabulous job getting us out there. And uh, so, yeah, um, it's just really working. It's working well, you know, the, the whole plan. And uh, the videos, uh, I think this video has been out like four days or yeah, something like four days. And it's hitting close to 3000 views just on YouTube, but probably more like 20,000 or 30,000 cumulative and uh the reaction on the uh, youtube uh page has been really good so if, if um, some of your listeners want to check out the video uh, just uh type in burning star souls of the innocent and the video comes up and there's even ordering information on the video itself uh, when they scroll down and uh so that's been a really good useful tool and I think there's something like 60 or 70 comments already, and they've all really been universally really positive. I don't think we have one dislike yet on the, uh, well, on the video. And it's like YouTube seems to be the way. It's the new MTV. It's yes. new music. Right. And so, you know, where's all our magazines now? There's, there's not, not many magazines anymore. No, it seems to have gone uh, the way of the dinosaur. It's, you know, where are the dinosaurs? Where, you know, where are the eight-track tapes? It's a thing of the past. Uh, but, uh, but the cool thing is, like, uh, when I turn my TV on, I can turn on YouTube, and I can see the song, and I can even see how well it's doing, you know? So it's kind of cool. And uh, we're going to try to uh, get on a lot of these uh, channels, you know, these metal channels now, like Metal Mania is one of them. And there's about six or seven other metal channels. So they're on Roku and they all play uh, metal like 24 hours a day. And I didn't even realize they existed till recently. So um, I'm going to contact... Uh, you know, Giles, our manager, and and tell him about it, though he may already be aware of it and he might already be on it, but it would be something that I would really dig, you know, seeing uh, seeing these 
uh, stations that have kind of taken the place of MTV because MTV really stopped playing rock and metal like 20 years ago. So something had to come along and kind of fill that void. And I guess MTV stopped playing pop too. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> what are they doing? No yeah, sure. exactly. You know, they're doing uh, whatever they think the market wants them to do. Personally, I think they're making a mistake. I think that if they started playing rock again and metal again, they would actually be surprised at the reaction that it would get. That's probably true. And it's like, um, but we are in a digital world now. And you mentioned Roku, you know, and the metal channels. I wasn't even aware of that. Um, it's uh, the, the TV can do so much things now that you know yes. you're, you're sitting and you're watching your big seventy-inch flat screen TV, and you, and you get to see any band you want to see on that. So exactly. that's exactly. pretty pretty good. Yeah, it's a good thing. You know, I really dig it. Uh, I like the freedom that the digital age brings to a lot of people. You know, uh, you can really zoom in to make a pun on any band you want. You know, you can whatever band you're into, and even bands that are not, you know, the the A list, you know, super well known bands. You know, like our band, or like uh, Riot, or like Sabotage, or Jag Panzer or Angel Witch or, you know, let's say you, you really are a fan of those bands, which I happen to be, I can I can watch them. I can turn on Roku. I can turn on some of those metal channels and I can see them. So it's a really cool thing. Or like Chris Impelitary, one of my favorite guitar players, uh, who's also signed to the same label, to Global Rock. He's got videos up there on uh, on YouTube and Roku and uh, and Ingve. Can't forget about Ingve. Right. So uh, it's a it's a cool thing, it really is, you know. And Jack, what do you have for you know coming up in the future? You know, let's say for summer, any gigs? You know, and and right now we really want to get this album implemented in the marketplace. We want we want the album to really. Um, make another rung on the ladder for us you know we wanted to ha and once we see how the album is doing i think it's going to impact on where we're going to play in uh later on in 2022 and in 2023 so we really uh have a wait and see thing going on and and so far it's really been good it's uh, just just in the last three weeks we're seeing that there really is uh, an audience out there, and the audience has actually gotten bigger. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I mean, and and I know that Giles and uh, Brian Adams, the CEO of Global Rock, I know that they would like to see Burning Star out there playing, and uh, and we will be out there playing uh, because, and, and it's not just about because it's going to improve album sales which it will, but it's really about because that's what we want to do. You know, our whole life as musicians leads us to the stage. In fact, I was talking to um, a well-known, a very well-known musician. I don't want to say his name, but uh, we were just, you know, just kind of shooting the breeze backstage. And, and I was just kind of, you know, asking questions like if I were almost interviewing this person so i said i said i said do you still enjoy playing yeah he was a few years older than me and uh he basically i mean i asked him almost like a fanboy kind of question like do you still enjoy d doing this you know and uh, he just looked at me and he said jack my whole life is almost like i'm waiting to go on you know that's what i live for so i thought that that was a very cool answer Mm. And uh, yeah, I, I still do as well. I mean, of course, I have other joys. You know, I mean, I I have a great relationship, great fiance. I have two boys. Uh, I, I enjoy life. But part of me is also like, you know, like I'm waiting to go on. It's like somebody's going to say, OK, man, you guys are on in 10 minutes, you know. And so, uh, yeah, I really do enjoy that. So I take it life is great and you're just enjoying the ride. 
Absolutely. And, uh, and, and I'm just happy that people are still digging our music, you know, a hundred years later. It's like they remember Burning Star, they remember Jack Star, they remember Rhino, the drummer that was in Man of War. Uh, they remember Ned, who played with uh, Jolyn Turner. He played with uh, Steve Whitman from uh, Kicks. And they're finding out about our new guy, Alex Panza. So, yeah, man, life is good, and uh, we're psyched. Good stuff. Well, Jack, um, I wish you a lot of luck and success with this album. It sounds great. Um, the production, just great. And, and, you know, let's get some more albums coming out in the future, you know, as well. Thank you. And I want to do a quick plug because you mentioned production. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Burns, who co-produced this album, did a phenomenal job. He's got a great studio and he has all the latest equipment, you know, like the Bogner amps, the Marshalls, everything. And uh, he just really worked really hard to get us that top level production that we have on the album. It sounds great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. And Jack, you have a great summer. And uh, thank you again for taking the time thank, with me Thank today. you. Great. Hope to see you guys on tour. All right. See you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.